We're going to talk about another movie. Another movie, yes! yes. Because movies are definitely a huge proponent as to why I am romantically jinx. So we're just going to blame cinema, okay. Well, what did we <laughs> say before? I, I, we, we was raised by TV. Majority okay. of us. Yeah. Well, all right. Let's, let's blame another movie and today. What movie are we blame? <laughs> well, see, I watched this the, the originally the first time I watched this. It was like I was still in high school, but I we know, are because it came out in two thousand six, two thousand seven, two thousand two thousand eight. You're wrong. No, I bet you it came out in two thousand seven. I'm reading from this damn DVD, motherfucker. Exactly. That's when the DVD came out. DVD came out in 2008. Bet you the movie came out in 2007. You should look this up because this one. Because <laughs> he just likes to be right, okay? You don't really be checking his facts and shit. <laughs> anyway, we're talking about. Yep, what, you what? saw it. You saw what it said. <laughs> yep. I didn't see it yet. Hold on. Yeah. Huh. I was like, I all what love move is. Move past it. You jackass. Oh, shit. <laughs> I stand what corrected. What love is. I stand That's corrected. what we're talking about. Yes. Um, and this basically. So you saw this. You saw this when it came out. So you you were yeah. in high school. What what grade were you in? I was a sophomore. I was very out of high school. I was, I was, I was out of high school, grown ass man. Because he's old as fuck. <laughs> Continue talking about your uh, your finding of this movie. Like I said, I was young and impressionable, and I watched it with my bestie at the time. And uh, I mean, I I'm just all things theater and and film. I'm a sucker for really good dialogue, so it hooked me automatically with the dialogue and the That's... cadence of the dialogue because I love the rapid fire that because... they were doing. It's it's funny that you say that because this movie is very much a play on film. Like this could be a play easily. Mm-hmm. Which a lot of the times I was I was in drama class and we watched plays that were on film. First one was uh, Singing in the Rain. We did Much Ado About Nothing. We did all sorts of ones. So this could easily fit in there. Yeah, because it's all in one room. And it's a lot of monologues. Like you got a lot of people monologuing. So yeah, mm -hmm. you could very easily put this on the stage. And very, very entertaining. It is very entertaining. It's very entertaining. <laughs> um, I often like movies that are written and directed by one person because it's a very singular thing. It's a singular vision. Like, you know, a lot of the time what you're going to get is exactly what they wanted you to see because they wrote and directed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Wait, wasn't, it, uh, wasn't it wrote by the guy who played Kenny? The the married guy. Yeah. Yes. Which that's another thing that's right up my alley. Like the whole thing with uh, like drama class and, and finding like the stock characters. This was nothing but stock characters. Yeah, everyone was, a, was an archetype. Yes. And lo and behold, who gives you the wisdom out of all of this? The dumb blonde. Yeah, yeah. So like you got your since because the movie does it this way. It, they have the like act one is the the act of the men basically, mm -hmm. and then you have your married guy, 
you have your perpetually single guy, you got your gay guy, you got your, for lack of a better word, nice guy. Well, they called and, him a tree. That was, yeah. Yeah. And then you got the guy who is in the complicated relationship who's the story is built around. Yeah. He is the protagonist. And they all start just boom, 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 going off of each other, going at each other at the same time. Mm-hmm. But the the weird, the catalyst is so weird because that, again, it, that's what makes it feel so much like a, a play. Because like the catalyst is this off-screen thing that you don't even hear her half of the conversation. You only hear his half. Mm-hmm. And then the story starts from there. Yep. Yeah. With the initial uh, situation being that he's about to get left by his, well, his wanted to be uh, fiance because he didn't get to propose right. her. His would have been fiance because, yeah, that was his plan for that night. So, what? What do you think of this first act? There was a lot of uh, stereotypes thrown back and forth, particularly by the character Sal, um, who basically is the misogynist of the group and is the one that is most stereotyped as the ladies' man or the the internal bachelor or whatever you want to call him. And then we, you know, through much discussion they actually finally break him down and then he realized they he finally came to his own vulnerability and said hey um i got broke up with yeah but that's that so that's what's interesting no one in this movie none of these guys are um are unaware of who they are each of them knows exactly who they are. like he knows who he is he knows he knows why he's the way he is. He knows who he is. And like the movie is each of them telling you who they are and why they are. So he's the most loud with it. But that's basically what each of their thing was when when you meet all of them. It's like, here's who I am and there's here's why I am. Which I did think also that some of the things that came up during each monologue was very interesting. Like, of course, I was like, what, 15 going on 16? Uh, I had no idea what the fuck the 11th man theory was or that it was, you know, a made up thing or not. So I was like, what the fuck is that? (laughs) Do people really use this tactic? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> technically, technically technically everything's made up Can't, let's not go on philosophy please <laughs> let's not go there okay. yes we 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 found that out uh while we were talking one day about the the engagement shit yeah but what so when was the last time you saw this i just watched it today no, I'm like, when was the last time you'd seen it since today? Since before today? Oh, I have it on my phone too. So I was, I watched, I watch it from time to time, just because I like the like the dialogue. So besides today, when was it most recently you've seen it? About a month ago, and then before that, a month that, ago. Yeah, about a month ago, and before that, around Valentine's Day. So, uh, why? Well, I mean, for I mean, particularly for Valentine's Day, it's a, per- it's a perfect movie to watch for a Valentine's Day thing. Why? Because it raises just different questions about what you think of love or what love really means, especially around Valentine's Day. Everybody's focused on showing their love to somebody. But do you really know what love means? Okay, so I... I haven't watched this movie since I would say 2011, maybe 2012. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've seen this movie. I it's for you though. I definitely remember enjoying the movie, and I still enjoy the movie, but I definitely don't think it says as much as I thought it said before. Why is that? 
Um, because everybody in this movie is full of shit. <laughs> well, yeah. And I think A- everyone. I think it said it best with the uh, one of the last lines before everybody disappeared was the girl Amy that said, well, what do I know? I don't know anything. Yeah. Everybody in this movie is full of shit. No one, no one knows what they're talking about because not a single one of them really accounts for nuance. And that's, that's, on, their, that's on the writer because he's writing archetypes. So everyone has to stay within that archetype because this movie isn't like a, a, a three-act structure in the form of character going from one thing to another. It's a three-act structure of, as in story going from one thing to another, but no character grows in this movie. Not even Cuba Gooding Jr.'s character. And I thought maybe he grew the first time, the first few times I saw it, but he doesn't grow at all. Well, the movie's not necessarily uh, about character growth. It seems to be just more like depicting of how these people think that they are. And in the question of, well, do I know what love means? And this is what how I feel that this subject is, especially around just in general with dating, because you see the girls in the bathroom talking it out. And each one of them has their own <laughs> views of thinking how dating should go or could or shouldn't go and uh it's not necessarily really gonna benefit any one of them okay i'm glad you got there because that's basically the second act is the women's portion of it and as i watched it this time i was like this is very much women written by a man because there's only really there's two and a half characters in that women's scene, but there's actually what four, five women in there. Yeah, but there's only two and a half characters. No one else, like Gina Gershon, she's the most built out character, and it's because she's the most, uh, for lack of a better phrase, man like, because <laughs> she's very much like the opposite to Matthew Lillard's character. Like she's yeah, she's, she's just- his counterpart. Yeah, I wrote but, out the, the, she's the cynic. Um, then you have uh, Laura, who's perceiving to be the nice girl. Um, I don't really know what stock character Catherine is technically. I guess more just morally corrupted or just, you know, playing off Which of, one's Catherine? The one who is with uh, married guys? Yeah, the one who likes to date married guys. Okay. And there's some very good one-liners in these. Uh, and then you got the the quiet girl, which was yeah. the one. She was basically the one talking to um, Cuba most of the time. And then you have the, the dumb girl. Yeah. Which, yeah. But those, especially those two were so barely written they weren't even really characters and then the other two sniping at each other say that again so that's why it's kind of hard to put them in there and put them on because i like i said i wrote out my notes because this was basically all stock characters but i didn't really know what to place Catherine or to place um what's the girl's name the quiet girl yeah yeah see and i think the writer didn't know either and that's why i'm saying it's very much women written by men because he only has so much um he's he's only had so much ammo to use for each of those women characters and by the time he got to the third one he was pretty much out so he had the super cynic he had the the girl pretending to be a good girl but actually is more nefarious and then the one who is just straight up nefarious and will lie to a man because all she wants is him for the night type of deal. Like, it's crazy. Like, there isn't a, an actual female point of view in this movie at all. And 
but I could identify with most of their characters. At, at some point, I've been just about every single one of them except Catherine's character. Yes, but none of them are real people. None of them are. So am I not a real person? No, because like you said, you have been all of them at a different point in your time because mm-hmm. real people are a mixture of things. So you've been able to to do some of the things that each of those women do, but you're not any of them because they are not people. Those are not people, especially like the guys. I would say more of them come off as real than the women do. I was about to say because my whole fuckboy thing, yeah, that's all up in there, and I yeah, hate it. But that's thing. what I'm saying because it's. It's written by a man, so a, a man. So he's been able to he he he's able to pinpoint the different things in men to to flesh out their characters more. But he wasn't really able to do that with the women, like with Gina, um, the the main one, Gina Gershon. Like she, who is she? What does she care about? I think she was just trying to figure out what everybody else's point of view because she was just like. I can't believe we've gotten this bad as a society when it comes to dating. And then you got the other one. What's her character? Who is she? You talking about Car- Catherine or Amy? I don't remember the names. The Anne Hache character, the the blonde one who apparently Amy. sucks a lot of dick but only fucks a few. Oh people. no no wait no that that's uh, Laura. Laura. Yeah. Is her, like Laura what does she character. what does she care about? sucking dick (laughs) see it's it's so like again i don't dislike the movie but i am really able to notice how limited it was for him to write them because they didn't really say much they regurgitated they regurgitated things that some men believe about women which maybe this was what that was supposed to be. This was supposed to be like a depiction of how he views or how, uh, I guess, most men, I won't say that's what he was trying to say, but still, maybe that's what he was thinking, that this was the view of how he sees women or how most men, men see women through his lens. If so, that was a poor way to do it because he was. it seemed like he wanted to give different points of view of all the different sexes but he just he he it kind of fell down it kind of falls apart when he tried to do that part so if that if he was trying to do that on purpose i don't think i like that very much but well i can't get over and i don't know how i didn't notice it but he um fucking matthew lillard he drops the f-bomb a lot well, yeah. When he's, when he's talking to his gay friend, like he just left and right with that f bomb. I was yeah. like, "Yeah, I was I, like, I, wow." That's what made me not want to like it in the first place when I originally watched it because just I, I was starting to I was starting to get into like drama and theater anyway, so I liked the 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 technical things about it and like I said, the speed of the dialogue and everything, but when it came to the actual words that were being spoken, when it came to, you know, listening to Sal, I was, I was furious. And that's why I say with the men, he was able to get more true characters because that is that person. That's what he would do. Because if you notice it, he's the only one who uses that word. Yeah. None of the rest of them do. It's just him. Mm -hmm. That's the character you would have say all of that foul shit because he is that foul dude. Mm-hmm. So it it makes it makes logical sense, but it also isn't necessarily honest because if you Why really do, that's what, that's what that's what if you really do love that guy and he has a gay friend and he loves his friend, he would not drop that word like that. Like he would probably use it outside of talking to his friend he would probably use it like to himself but he would not use it face to face to his buddy like that there's no way 
not if he's his actual and friend that he actually the, loves. Exactly. And then just all the things that he was saying in between that, saying um, that he wishes that he could be that way because he doesn't want to have to deal with chick drama and that he wishes that he could have somebody that could play sports and then blow him 17,000 times a day. Like, are you serious right now? Are you fucking serious right now? That's what you think about that shit? You know for sure that there's people like that because you've talked about knowing people like that. Yes. So like, that, and that's what I'm saying. Th- those, a lot of those characters are, are way cool more honest. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> Because like his his bullshit theory about homosexuality, which uh, was bafflingly stupid, his but at the same time his style of argument is good. Like he really knows how to argue his points, and yeah, that's when, like the problem. Down. Yeah, that that was the problem because when they brought about the the doctor and the the um, I guess what what do they call it the hypothalamus or something? <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> basically what I'm getting at is like it's it's really easy to seem smart and like you're making points when the other people in the argument aren't as serious about it as you are. So even when you're wrong, but you're smarter than the other people, you may seem right. And you could tell he felt like he was right, especially after he made a particular point. Uh, Which, like I said, why why would you be friends with that guy? Why, Why would you have... Uh, the people that are not saying this shit, they're just, you know, just sitting there, just not really even saying, or they may say, oh, come off it, man, you know, just chill out, and they just keep going. Yeah, it took them a while, but then they eventually, like, call him on his shit. Yeah. Which I enjoy, but it had to come from the writer. The writer had to call him on his shit, so, which is kind of weird, because it's the writer double back in and saying I don't believe what this character is saying I just had to write that because that's what this character is and I'm going to really show you that I don't believe it by me being the one to correct him (laughs) which I I was just like okay he we got the married guy and he's supposed to be the I guess out of the out of their group he was supposed to be the benevolent one or the one that sees uh, the wisdom. I put him in my notes as the reformed player uh, because that seems what he the vibe he gave off of, especially when he was talking about the aspects of cheating. Because hmm. he was just saying, you know, how, you know, just selfish, you, do, you fucking do it anyway because you uh, so always think you, you're at the trainer. So about him, you, you think about him the same way uh, what's her name? thinks about him the the black girl you basically agree with her assessment of him then. i mean not not really because she was also saying that he uh is coming back out with the boys to uh have his wolf come out or whatever the fuck she was saying and that she's mm-hmm. got to get back out there get back out there and run and i was like It's obviously he called her out on her bullshit because that was the hook that she uses to get married men to start fucking with her. This is why I say everyone's full of shit in that movie because even the so-called like married guy who's supposed to know all, he still doesn't really know shit. He knows his situation and what's smart and what works for him, but no one is not playing some sort of game. Like he even in his own way is playing his the game that he and his wife enjoy to play with each other. And that's like, yeah, I'm going downstairs, but like I don't really want to spend the whole time downstairs. I'm going downstairs because I can't sleep, but you can. So I'm not going to bother you. So he's still kind of full of it and doesn't really know what he's talking about. He knows what he's talking about for his situation because that's what works for him and his marriage. But 
that kind of shit wouldn't work for everybody else. <laughs> I mean, like I said, the whole thesis really is that nobody knows anything. And we're just all dealing with our own shit. I forget how, how what did she say? Or how did she phrase it? It was like some, she, she was talking to uh, Amy's character and saying that as everything, just one big coping mechanism that we all do to just, you know, deal with dating. Who said that? The blonde girl said that? Yeah, I'm talking about the, the quiet girl talking to oh, Amy. okay. Okay. Right it. before the girls left out of the bathroom, and that's when she says, "Well, what do I know? I don't know anything." Gotcha. Also, I don't even remember, and this is how long it's been. Like, I don't even remember that random ass like fantasy sequence. The pole scene. Yeah. Like when it happened, I was like, <laughs> I don't remember this at all. That shit was funny as hell, but you know. I basically just, I guess, was thrown in there to show what the guys think when they see a bunch of women. I guess, maybe, but it, it's weird. But like, funny, I blocked that out of my memory of the movie. The, fu- the funniest part was just watching um, <laughs> watching Wayne just sit there and just was like, and oh, yeah, uh, yeah. George was trying to pick up their clothes while they were <laughs> taking them off. <laughs> And that that's another thing. Like I it's it's hard. It's like I get it, you gotta write for archetypes, but come on. Like th- that's when he reaches points where he doesn't feel like a real person. I mean, I just chalk it up to this wasn't supposed to depict anything that was really real. I this don't know. It, it feels good. like the writer. It feels like the writer thought he was very smart. It feels like he thinks he's smarter than he is, and he thinks his movie is saying more than it is. But I think it's actually saying less than it is. But at the same time, is that well, then what do you think of the end of the movie? Say it again. What do you think of the end of the movie then? Uh, the ending part where uh, Sarah finally when comes. Leaves. Yeah, when everybody leaves and Sarah finally comes. Oh, that is the most ridiculous thing. So really? I think the movie would be better if the last thing we saw was everyone leaves and he opens the door, and it's her. The movie should have ended there. Why wouldn't we want to know what the... F- We've been talking about this heifa all goddamn day. Why wouldn't we want to know what she has to say? Because the movie ain't about her. The movie is about love and relationships. So if you end it where I say... You, it would be an ambiguous fucking shit, and I hate that shit. It's not ambiguous. It allows you to think about what you think love is. Uh, I don't Instead, like it. it's not ambiguous. That's not. That's not what it is. It's you deciding to. It's you deciding what you believe love is because you have all these different characters tell you what they think love is, and then if the movie ends there you're allowed to be like, okay, this is what I think love is. This is what I think what may have happened. But instead, we get him interacting with her mm-hmm. and he gives us his thesis of what love is or what it is to love someone. And I don't exactly like it. I think it's... I will have to respectfully disagree because... Okay, I, so why do you like the ending? I like the ending because the to me the point was what is he getting from this whole situation? He's the protagonist. So with all this chitter chatter and everything with everybody else's 
thoughts and everything. And then he gets the final saying from Amy. He has to then see her come through the, Sarah come through the, uh, the door. And even though he knows that this is her decision that she's made as far as to leave, he also has a decision to make for himself on whether to choose or not to choose to go after her. Because a lot of movies, especially a lot of romantic movies, the big question for a lot of uh, protagonists, especially you see all the fucking dramatic plane takeoffs where they're running after them and whatever to get them out at the end of the movie. It's the question of, do I still chase after this, chase after this person or do I let them go? And that was his decision after all of that. After all the bullshit that he was hearing through out both sides, both male and female, that was his like coming together in that moment. And what was his decision? It, it, huh? And what do you think his decision was? That regardless of whether she came back to him or not, that he was okay with knowing that he still loved this person and that maybe uh, they weren't meant to be together. And if they are, then she will come back. It's that whole thing of like, if you love, let some, if you love somebody, let them go. And if they come back to you, then they're meant to be with you. And you don't realize how bullshit that is? <sighs> Maybe to you, I just think that that's a, that's a decision on whether you decide to fight for somebody or just let them, let let yourself see what they decide to do. And you don't see how bullshit that is? You know what? Uh, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> I, I, I feel like this is getting antagonistic for no reason. Um, no, I'm just saying I see what I see. That's, that's my opinion and that's what I'm sticking to. But what do you see? I just told you. No, you haven't. Yes, I did. What do you want from me, man? Wh what do you see? I just said what I see. I okay. said that his decision on whether or not he should follow and try to keep pursuing it because that's what he was wanting to do. That was the main question that uh, Sal asked him as playing devil's advocate and saying, well, what if you can't get her back? Then what? And then that's when he said, well, then I guess I'll just become like you. Okay. What does that have to do with what happened at the end? Oh my God. The point that I'm making is that he chose to let it happen and to see what she would do. If she loves him and they want to get together in the end, that's on her. She, she's the factor that is just kind of a free agent. Okay, this is, I'm going to explain, that. I'm going to explain to you why that I think the movie should have ended the other way and why this ending makes it not work and why it's all bullshit. Because if, if you do that and then it all just becomes put on her, we, have not, we don't have anything of this character. We just see the action that she made that was the catalyst to make everything happen. But then also at the end, it's her responsibility to make everything unhappen. It's he basically decides to put it all on her and he's not responsible for anything. That's probably the reason she was leaving him in the first place, which means it doesn't really work out in the end because she did all of that. There's no way you do all of that and then you want you you expect to come home and him to just say, if you leave, I'll love you anyway, but whatever. Nigga, you missed the point. He missed the point of everything she did. She did all of that because she was at her wit's end with everything that has probably gone on before. Like, we only hear how good he treated her 
from him saying it out of his mouth. We don't know how he actually treated her because we've never seen them together. We don't know anything about how she feels about the relationship, and we never do. The only thing we know how about how she feels from the relationship is that she's ready to leave it. So guess what? He couldn't have been that great. He couldn't have been that awesome. He, he couldn't have been a person worth being with if she got to the point of leaving him on Valentine's Day. And then at the end, he just says, well, I love you anyway, but I'm not going to be the one to make the decision or to make the effort. That's like, nigga, what? Well, you can't make somebody do something. You can't I'm not force- saying make her do something. I'm saying to, to just say at the end, I'm going to love you anyway. You, you're continue to not put in the effort. That's why she left. She probably left because he didn't put in effort. She probably left because she didn't know what the fuck is going on in his head. They need to com- communicate better, most likely. But there is no way he's actually mentally ready to propose to her and she didn't know that was coming. So she left because she left because she felt like it wasn't ever coming. It's just like he felt like making that decision all of a sudden. It's it doesn't work. But if you leave it with just the door opening, it's all unknown. I would be very pissed if that was the ending. I'm more pissed off that the ending is he doesn't he doesn't do anything different. The only time I've ever liked when something ends like that on a movie is if it was something like um, um, Inception. You expect something like that from that type of movie, not this one. I expected it from this movie too, just because the catalyst was already so unknown. Like, you go the whole movie just hearing her name. You never even see her face in pictures because she cut all the pictures and just left his half of the picture. So, Mm -hmm. honestly, when you see it, it just feels like, oh, it doesn't matter who who the woman is. It matters that that's the catalyst. And maybe he'll learn something from there. And it's on you to figure out what he learns from there. But to all of a sudden actually bring her in and to pretend like she's a character who has no real character, no real agency. And then he just says, I'm not going to do anything. It's all on you. Kind of fucks with me. Kind of of falls down. (laughs) He also is the protagonist. The story is about him. Exactly. We're looking He's at the this, protagonist, so it's about him. That's why we didn't see her throughout this entire thing because it's not technically, even though the subject around it being should be also involving in her, but the story itself is about him. He is the protagonist. All this bullshit in between was focused around his interpretation of what love is. The, the the focus is him. The story is about love. He is the focus, but love is the story. And the ending that we get for what love is, is a shit ending, I, I feel. I disagree. Because if he think love is him just saying he loves her and then not putting in the effort, that's shit. I didn't see it that way. It's basically based upon him saying to her that he is allowing her to choose on whether they continue in their relationship. Because if he tried to get her back, however, he was trying to do that in the very beginning, like he was saying before Sal said something then it kind of feels like he was going to try to force the situation. She had already made the decision with leaving those two bags and doing all this stuff with the Dear John letter and everything to her. 
uh, to him and she had already made up her mind just like uh the part where kenny's character was saying that which not all not all the case but of course it's a stop stereotyping but he's saying that a lot of women when they're ready to leave somebody it takes them maybe six months to get over that person and then when they're ready to leave they just leave so he had she had already made that decision That's why I'm saying everyone in the character, everyone in the movie is full of shit because every single character is playing a game. The fact that we see her come in and do all this, that lets us know that she was just another character playing a game. Because if a person's leaving someone, they won't do all the theatrics of leaving the bag stare and then I'm going to come home and leave you. That's not how life works. That's not how people work. She's also a game player. The fact that she also plays fucking games makes her another shitty character and not like well written and thought out but people play games people in real life play these games it's not that far yes fit. and that's not a person you should be with fair enough but still it wasn't play it wasn't that far fetched that you couldn't believe that you know some of these things take place yes it was because I've come home to a house of someone who's gone and her shit was gone. She didn't leave things to come back to pick it up. It's gone. Because she's there's plenty gone. Of people that do that type That's of it. shit. There's plenty of people that do that type of shit. This is this is why this is why you have the problems you have. Because no, you're you're believing the- you're believing this a little too much. Yeah. You no, find too much truth in the falsities of this movie. I don't find too much truth. I'm saying that these things actually do happen. So it's not that far-fetched. Especially now with the internet and the Instagrams and all that shit. There's plenty of people that do that shit right now. You sound like a real old person when you said the Instagrams. Yes, you At did. least I'm not actually older. Hey, you could have fooled me. The Instagrams. Instagrams. The Grim Gram. Whatever. The Twitter. The I, don't, I, don't do, I don't do none of that. <laughs> yes, I'm you off do. Twitter. You say the Instagrams. You say the you know what I'm saying? I'm off of Twitter. I'll be on Twitter. I don't do the, the tweet. Twitter. The Tweety Twops, the bird I stuff. <laughs> tweet, tweet. I mean, none of that shit, you know what I'm saying? Why did you, you look at me like that? Did you just say Tweet Tweet like you fucking Michael Jackson and Rock and Robin? Are you serious? <laughs> you like just, said, you said Tweet Tweet. Pow, pow, nigga. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna end this on the onomatopoeias because that's enough. <laughs> so Look, I'm tired. <laughs> we both enjoyed the movie. We both enjoyed the movie. I think it's a little less good than I remember it being. You think it's just as good as you've been seeing. So we will agree to disagree on the ending. Absolutely, because yeah. <laughs> And I'm just saying, only one of us is romantically jinxed. So, um, one, of our, one of our visions of the ending, maybe. You know, you know what? It's okay, though, because I'm single and I'm going to stay single. So, we're good. We're good over here. I don't have none of those problems. I'm single as fuck and I don't care. Sounded like Matthew Lillard's character. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, Good, that's a that's an outro.